I used to sit in this little apartment, and it was a room. As a matter of fact, the room was so small, I remember I was able to open up the window and close the door while sitting on the bed at the same time. It was like eight feet by eight feet by nine feet. And, but the one thing about that room, there was really very little distraction. So I would sit there, propped up in bed, and I'd go out with my big pen and, and legal pad and just start writing these, these stories. And, and most of them were, were, were very, very trivial. But there was something about the process of unrealized dreams. I was always brought back to this subject because I think it's one of the most enduring subjects and one of the most difficult passages for people to accept that they never were realized in their own lifetime, that they just didn't get that shot. I decided it was a time to come to California. So I went to California and I moved in the valley and things weren't going very, very well there. As a matter of fact, I had to go out and try to sell my dog because it was either uh, do that or, or uh, he just was not going to be very well fed around the house. And then one night I went to see uh, Muhammad Ali. For one brief moment, this supposed stumble bump turned out to be magnificent in the fact that he lasted and knocked the champion down. I said, boy, if this isn't a metaphor for life, his entire life crystallized at that moment. He will be remembered for all eternity, at least uh, uh, among the fight fans. He did something extraordinary. I said, now that, that is probably what I need as a catalyst for an idea. A man who's going to stand up to life and take one shot and maybe go the distance. So I started to write. And it was one of those writing frenzies. And three days later, I came up with the script of Rocky. Now, the script, by no means, was a finished piece of material. It was probably about 90 pages, and maybe 10% of it remained in the final script. But it was done. I first met uh, Bob Shardoff and Erwin Winkler, and I believe I was there on, on a, a, a casting call. So we're talking a little bit, and I guess I really wasn't right for the acting part. And on the way out, I said, oh, I don't know if it matters, but I do a little bit of writing. He goes, really? I said, yeah, I'm writing this, this story. This, uh, I have this thing about wrestlers, and I might do something about boxing. Well, he says, well, bring it around. And I thought, if I hadn't stopped on the way out, you know, that's why I tell all actors or writers, don't give up, keep talking. Eventually, you might hit a nerve somewhere, and they go, ah, come on back. And if they didn't say, come on back, or bring it later and let's see what you've developed, I wouldn't be sitting here. So I have to give incredible credit to their, uh, to their insight and their patience, and they're willing to take a chance, which um, it doesn't exist much anymore, unfortunately. Originally, when I brought the script to them, they were fairly enthusiastic about it. The one thing they were not enthusiastic about was me playing the part, and, and I really can't blame them. At the time, Ryan O'Neill was a, a candidate, Burt Reynolds, Robert Redford, Jimmy Kahn, and they all you know, were, were at the top of their game. And so I could see it, but there was something inside of me that, that you know, this opportunity is never going to come around. And I really wasn't used to money, and I had no idea of what I would be missing. But the temptation started to come forward. First, it was uh, 25 grand, then $100,000. I, well, I never heard of 100,000 because I had had like $106 in the bank. And like I said, I had to sell my dog and things were not looking very, very good. Uh, my $40 car had just blown up, so I was taking a bus to work. And but still, it, it didn't matter. I wanted to stick with it. Then it went up to 150,000, 175,000, it went up to 250,000. Now my head was starting to spin. And it went up to 330,000. And probably, I heard it went up to 360,000. And I thought, all right, you know, you've really managed poverty very well. You've got this down to a science. You really don't need much to live on. I had, I had like sort of figured it out. So I was not um, in, in any way uh, used to, to the good life. So I thought, you know what? If I, I know in the back of my mind, if I sell this script and it does very, very well, I'm going to jump off a building. 
And if I'm not in it, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to leap in front of a train. I'm going to be very, very upset. So this is one of those things where you just roll the dice and you fly by the proverbial seat of your pants. Say, all right, I got to try it. I got to just do it. I may be totally wrong, and I'm going to be taking a lot of people down with me. But I just believe in it. We didn't have really the, the money to shoot a normal Union film at that time in Philadelphia, so we would travel in a van. I would jump out of the van, and uh, we were working with the handheld camera at the time with, with Garrett Brown, and it was uh, ex somewhat experimental. And he'd film me running through shopping malls and up down the steps and flights, uh, I mean, curved corridors along the river until finally my legs basically gave out and I'm like writhing on the ground and I want to <laughs> rise up and say, John, I'm dying here. And he goes, no, no, use it. Use the pain. I said, for what? I mean, I'm in misery. He goes, well, no, no. You know, it, it's giving your character, it's give, it giving him some depth. I said, it's giving me bruises. It's giving me like agony. I can't sleep at night. But you know, John would use, one thing about John, he would use the environment. If he saw like the scene where we just jumped down and saw this ship along the dock, this uh, uh, docked along the pier. And he said, just jump out, run as fast as you can along the ship. And, and, and I'm running and running. I said, you know what? My legs are buckling. I'm, I'm literally going to crash down here. Teeth are going to go, jaw, face. I'm just going to be ground down to this flat-faced image. Please. And, and I just barely made it. As John had had me, he would have me run and run and jump park benches and down streets and people are throwing things at me. Like when I had the orange thrown at me and I'm, these people had no idea who I was. I was just some strange alien vader in a well-worn, tattered, baggy, <laughs> incredibly <laughs> ugly sweatsuit running through their neighborhood, you know? And they're like throwing things at me. And we kind of like made it work, but I actually was like, I thought they were trying to hit me with the orange. Rocky never expected to win, never. He knew it. He was that much of a realist. And I, I like admired the character for that because so often I had gone to uh, fight films and or sporting films. Yes, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna knock him out, you're gonna win. I said, no, guy goes, I'm not gonna win. I'm going to get destroyed. But if I can, just be lucid. If I can still be standing on my feet, you know what, then life isn't so bad. And I think, again, symbolically, at the very end of our lives, if we can still say, you know, we were never humbled, we were knocked down, but we got up, and I can say, I lived life with integrity, and I took all the blows, as the song says, and I'm, I still prevailed, I think that's a, that's a, a good epitaph for anyone. And that's what I tried to capture in this film. But more importantly, I also realized that you can't be alone. To really succeed, no man really is an island. And it took the love of a woman that no one else loved. It took even the befriending of, of her brother who no one could understand, but they gelled together. And, and Rocky brought this, this whole group and with Burgess Mariners, and together they were like individual pieces, but together they made a whole entity, a whole person. And and I think, personally speaking, that's happened to me too. When when you find the right components in your life, the right people that gel with you, then you feel as though you you're invincible. It may be a fallacy, but you at least feel as though you can you can take all that life has to dish out. You know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is gonna be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why, you got a lot going on, kid. Oh, well, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself, and this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor, not to go through with this, okay? This is only gonna end up bad for you, and it's gonna end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. That's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke, and that I'm gonna be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you?
You ain't gonna believe this. But you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up to say to your mother, this kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always gonna love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son, you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life.